got a lot to talk about and not a lot of time to talk about it. This has been one of the most hyped up college football weekends I can remember in quite some time. I remember this even being hyped up in June and July is October 12th. Do not put a wedding here. Just don't do it. Avoid it at all costs. If you put a wedding on this Saturday, there's something wrong with you. Just outright there is. And there's so many good games to talk about. And of course, this week, I just get a little too busy. But I do want to just go through and just speed run. We're just going to do a lightning round of games off the top of the head. No script. No, no, no biases around here outside of I really, really want Oklahoma to beat Texas. But we'll start it off with Red River. Uh, speak of the devil. We'll talk about number 18, Oklahoma facing number one, Texas. This is. In, in my opinion, if you have not checked out my TikTok and you have not seen my video around this, outright, Texas has no excuses in this game. They just don't. Oklahoma's missing their top five wide receivers, just like they did when they played at Auburn, and that offense did not look great with a true freshman in Michael Hawkins. I think Oklahoma's defense could keep this game interesting, but the thing that I struggle the most with is what is the path for Oklahoma to actually beat Texas? Open, open panel, open comment section for you. I don't know what the path is. Outright, I just don't. And it's no disrespect to Oklahoma because I think this, this program has been disrespected in a lot of areas. But I still think when we look at the five wide receivers are out, Oklahoma's offensive line is not that good. Their running attack has not been good all year. You're putting a true freshman back there with, I would say, egregious play calling up to this point. It's a tall task. I get it. If if your entire argument is, oh, it's Red River, th then you're you're probably screwed. I, I think Texas should cover their 14 and a half point spread, which is crazy for a game of this magnitude. And the, the thing that I want to talk about the most about that is, yeah, if, if Oklahoma covers the spread and they, they get within that 14 point range, that's not a win for Oklahoma. Oklahoma expects to win this game. Oklahoma fans would not leave happy knowing that, oh, it was a close fight with all things understood. And on the flip side for Texas, you should win this game and you should win comfortably. No, no excuses. I don't want to hear, oh, well, it's Red River. You know, it's a weird game. No, we're not doing that. So that's my prediction. I think Texas wins comfortably. I would love to be wrong on that fact. But we also got to talk about Ohio State and Oregon. Number two, Ohio State going to number three, Oregon. Eugene is going to be rocking. Autzen Stadium is going to be rocking. And this one's like the closest game of the week outside of like two other ones I'm going to talk about. I think everything in my gut is telling me Ohio State, do not overthink it. Just go with what your gut is telling you. But when I, I think the matchup's so close here, I personally think that if I were to pick Oregon, I'm getting the better quarterback. Dylan Gabriel, I think, is better than Will Howard pretty comfortably. I'm getting the better play caller. That might be a hot take. I love Chip Kelly, but I also like Will Stein in the modern and, and the, how good of a play caller he is. I like it more than Chip Kelly. I think you could argue maybe Dan Lanning and Ryan Day, no, I won't go there. But I think I get the better play caller, I get the better quarterback, and I get home environment. Now, if this was neutral site, Big Ten Championship, Ohio State gets a second run at it, Ohio State every single time. I just think this is the, the, the statement game from Oregon arriving to the Big Ten. I don't really know how they're going to be able to do it because of how good this Ohio State roster is. But we've also seen a lot of uh, Big Ten teams when they've been able to travel two plus time zones, whether it's California to the Big Ten country, Big Ten country to California, teams have struggled one in eight. So I, I'm going to go with Oregon in a super close game. I'm not doing any score predictions here because there's no real skill in that. I'm going to give Oregon close and, and it's their signature win in the Dan Landing era, in my opinion. What else do we got? We got Ole Miss at LSU. I don't get why Ole Miss is favored here. I agree with Josh Pate on the, on the sentiment that it doesn't really make sense. You know, Ole Miss has played, I think, seven straight games up to this point. I believe LSU is coming off of a bye week. I don't think LSU is the better team than Ole Miss, but I think they're going to be the better team this weekend. If that makes any level of sense, I, I, I can elaborate on that in the comments. But I think Ole Miss, their trajectory, 
They're desperate for a bye week. They're desperate for a reset. And I'm so curious. The rest of their outlook for the, the entire season is really dependent on this game. They have to go into one of the toughest environments, and in my opinion, the toughest environment in all of college football. I think the, the game script of what LSU likes to do matches up really well with what Ole Miss is not good against, and it's that secondary with Ole Miss. I think Kyron Lacey, Nussa Meyer, plus you have this emergence with Caden Durham, the running back, even if he's a true freshman. This has been a year of incredible true freshmen at skill possessions, just making incredible plays. I think of Jeremiah Smith, Ryan Williams, Caden Durham's obviously not on this generational run, but when he's been able to get touches, he's done incredible. I mean, I think he had what, 200 yards in the first quarter or first half against the, some cupcake, but still, as a true freshman, it's still impressive. And when was the last time LSU had a really good running back that's been a hole with this in, within this team that's been like the elephant in the room? You really don't talk about it. You think this is the year, this running back, they're going to have some momentum. Maybe they, they get some things going. And it turns out to be Caden Durham, who I really liked coming out of high school. I thought he was one of the better running back recruits, and I thought he was going to go to Texas A&M. He ends up going to LSU, and he's been absolutely balling. I just don't think the game script works in Ole Miss's favor. There's too many things going against them. So I'm going to give LSU not comfortably. There's going to be a lot of points scored. So I'm leaning LSU on this one. What else uh, on an October 12th slate? That is absolutely loaded. Let's talk about Kansas State and Colorado. Another game. I would say the Ole Miss LSU game. Don't know who to pick. I would say this game as well. I, I And the problem is Colorado is like a trend breaker on some nights where it's just like, it doesn't matter. I think they did match up really well with UCF. And, and so I think their skill sets matched up to where it allowed Colorado to be in this game. The thing that concerns me about Colorado in this matchup is if Colorado is not up to snub when it comes to running the ball, smash mouth, ground and pound football then Kansas State's going to be able to run all over them. That's their MO. That's their bread and butter. That's going to win them this game. What I think the path for Colorado to win this is, I don't think Kansas State can keep up in a shootout. If you're able to cause enough problems with Avery Johnson, forcing him to pass and read defenses, though I think Avery is super talented, I think him being able to break off the edges and not be able to be contained is going to be critical, but Colorado's seen a lot of growth when it comes to the edge defenders and the transfers they've added. If they can get pressure on Avery Johnson and those passing downs while having an athletic spy there, then you can have some real issues within this Kansas State offense, especially knowing the last time they went on the road, they got dominated by BYU. Now, the caveat there, BYU arguably has the best defense in the entire Big 12. BYU has absolutely surpassed my expectations like tenfold. Just go look at my Big 12 tier list video egregiously bad so i think byu is a really good defense and is almost slept on so don't do the correlation causation thing of well they went on the road and they played bad so they're gonna go on the road and play bad again this colorado defense is not close to what byu brings to the table but can they bring enough to rattle them because we all know colorado is going to be able to put points on the board if this was at kansas state completely different game i think that it could be the same game script of what you saw when Kansas State played Arizona, and you might be able to get that in a road environment, but we all know the Buffaloes are going to be rocking. This is an upset alert. Do I pick Colorado, though? Do I go with it? As someone that has made a lot of videos about Colorado, uh, on some podcasts, I've been known to be a Colorado hater. Do I go for it? Nope. I got to rock with Avery Johnson. I'm not going to jinx it and, and try to say Colorado and then emotionally hedge my bets. I'm not going to do that. I'm going with Kansas State in a close one because Every single Colorado game has to be cinema, doesn't it? That's just that's just how the game works. Another underrated game is Penn State travels to USC. The same points I had about the traveling two time zones can be applied here. Going to USC, USC coming off a rough loss to Minnesota. Minnesota's was just built to beat a team like USC. And what Miller Moss are we going to get this year? Is it going to be this up and down, like some games it works, some games it's not, some games it's mid? There's a lot of fluctuation here. You know, USC, I think their defense is making progress. You can't deny that. It's making progress. It's got me feeling nicey. But it's not where you need it to be, to be a championship contender, something that USC was expecting when they hired Lincoln Riley. They have a good passing defense, something that was expected when you got the defensive coordinator from UCLA. And so 
are they going to be physical enough to stop a guy like Nick Singleton? Drew Aller, if you can make him beat you, that's the path for USC to win this game. But do they have the guys in place, especially with the depth in the defensive line? You you lose a talented guy like Bear Alexander. Do you have enough to stop Nick Singleton and Katron Allen in that rushing attack and the physicality? Because that's what lost you last week. There's a lot of pressure around Miller Moss and your offensive line has been letting a lot of pressure and you're going against arguably one of the best pressure teams. They they have athleticism and they can get to you fast. So is it going to be a, a, a game script of Miller Moss, get the ball out, play, play the point guard role and, and we'll neutralize to the best of our capabilities and make just enough plays while we force the guy like Drew Hour to beat us? Because I think at the end of the day, what USC can live with is Drew Hour beating them especially knowing their strength of their defense being that secondary, they could live with that. I, I think USC could live with that, but can they stop this rushing attack? I just don't think they can. I, I think Penn State will be in a dogfight. I think Penn State as the number four team in the nation is egregious. You know what? Let's go for a chaos weekend. Give me USC to pull off the upset. We're rocking with it. I I just, there's so much chaos. I, I am applying so much logic in a college football world where logic is just, it's just not applied. You can't ask to add logic in a world where logic is just never going to be found. Um, let's throw out, as I pull this up right now, to look at the rest of the schedule. Because of how loaded this slate is, I'm just curious, in my heart of heart, if there's any games that might be an upset alert. Let me shoot my shot here. Live, it all stays in the show. I'm scared for Iowa State. Let me point that out. Going to West Virginia is not nothing. I'd be worried about West Virginia pulling off a major upset in a Big 12 that has just been absolutely crazy. I love Iowa State. I've made videos about Iowa State. I think Iowa State going into the year was one of my favorite teams, but this is just a bad spot. A night game in West Virginia. They're favored only by three. It's going to be a dogfight. I'm going to get West Virginia. I think they win that one, beating the number 11 team. So we got an upset with the number nine team. We have an upset with the number two team, an upset with the number 11 team, and the number four team. I want chaos this weekend, folks, and I know you do too. I know this has been a speed run, but I just wanted to get my thoughts out there, man. I just wanted to talk some football real quick. I have a... A Wrecking Crew Texas a &M video in the pipeline that's going to be out after this weekend. We got a bunch of reactions to do. Go check out that tier list video that I just released. It's 30 minutes long. Go grab some food. Play that video while you're just chilling and relaxing. But thank you so much for watching Rush of the Field. Dude, we've seen so much growth with this channel. And it absolutely means the world to me that you guys are giving me an opportunity to talk football. Because that's all I'll ever ask of you. Whether it's a like, a comment, a subscribe, anything across the board means the world to me. Genuinely, I, I love this channel so much. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.